Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the 4 Tip Make You Loco channel. So today's video should be pretty interesting, hopefully maybe even comical. Um, the problem we have is this 2009 F-150 543 Velvet Course uh, has been through the mill. Okay, so it's been a couple different shops, and the latest shop did a, a full timing job on it to correct the usual VCT codes on it. The guy spent like four or five grand on it, and it's just gotten worse. So they never fixed the original timing error codes, and then they also created a huge oil leak that wasn't there before, and the AC is not working anymore. Could all be simple, uh, but I have a feeling, based on a quick visual, that this is going to be a, a great video on how to not do a timing job on the 543 valve. Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a quick look under the hood, see what we see, you know, a quick visual inspection, uh, and then we'll pull some codes, and then we'll come back to um, what we actually find when we start pulling things apart to redo the timing job on here. So the very first thing I notice on here, of course, I don't like cold air inductions. That's nothing to do with the uh, timing job, though, but that is a big strike in my book. Um, right here, the resonator for the... Air intake snorkel here is broken off, so they just capped it off and said, who cares? Um, that indicates they did not know how to remove this without doing it, and they kind of yanked up on it. Not familiar with the engine, and they broke it. And moving on, you can see the valve covers on here are painted gray, that, that, that remanufactured gray. And it's like a light coating on there. You can see it's a real quick coating on there in the front cover to make it all look nice and new on there. Trying to hide stuff, I see. So on this side over here, you can see the retainers for the harnesses. They're broken off of there because they didn't know how to pry and pop them up on there. Uh, so they're broken off on there. Uh, this one's starting to come up off. You can see it right there. Uh, small stuff like that. Um, what else? What else on here? So I'm looking at it and you know some of the things are damaged like the the radio interference capacitors right here it could have been there beforehand uh, but on the valve covers they're using cheap gaskets on here you can see the red gasket on there it's a cheap gasket set definitely not ford the ford gaskets for this engine are like 15 dollars per side it's not so bad and they also missed the sealant glob on the joint between the front cover and the head you see there's no sealant glob there so of course it's leaking oil and of course that means the other side is missing the sealant glob and that's the one that really leaks oil so did they miss the sealant glob on the t-joints in the front cover too i don't know uh the coolant on here is almost empty and it's also the wrong color for this year um the dipstick too it's there it's not necessarily corroded or broken like a lot of these are uh but the bolt down here where it bolts in it's probably cross thread. It's a little hard to get down in there. I know from experience. Uh, so they cross threaded it and it's in there, uh, but it's not tightened or it's cross threaded. Uh, so that's a real problem. And there's a huge oil leak underneath. We'll go over that once we get up in the air. Um, this also, uh, since the, the timing job has created um, rich coats. So what I noticed, and I'll start it here in a second, is this valve cover right here is very noticeable just by anybody that it's buzzing big time. The baffle inside of here is obviously come apart for the PCV system, and it's probably pulling through more oil than it should, causing the rich condition, all right? So we're gonna check on that, and it also could be a skewed MAF reading because of the cold air induction system. We don't know yet, but this is definitely an issue with the, the, the uh, valve cover, which anybody should be able to kinda hear that, know something's wrong. So let's go ahead and pull codes on there real quick. I'm sure we're going to find a lot more once I start pulling things apart. Stuff that's not torqued, uh, that's over torqued, uh, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just pull codes on here. I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. And we'll take a listen to that valve cover. So this one, uh, because of the timing issues and, and the rich coat issue and stuff like that and our flex fuel uh, being off when it came in, it was like 60, 80%, which is way off. Um, he has starting issues. So the first thing I checked on there was a master flow sensor reading. A uh, key on engine off, that's good to go. Our fuel trims are course reset right now, not running. Uh, but I also check any of the temp sensors. All these temp sensors are, are used for lookup tables for fuel calculation. So 
they're right on spec. The IAT is a little bit high, but once you start the engine and you let it run and there's air actually being pulled through it, it's not stagnant, it does come down to a correct reading. Our uh, barrel is, of course, really close for this area, so we're good to go there too. So like I said, this one was running rich. Okay, so you see it started pretty good there. It's been sitting in here overnight. And that's because I relearned the flex fuel. So before it was 60 to 80% on there. And it was just, you know, hard to start because the calculation was off. So you can see the IAT corrected itself. Once we have airflow, look at it, it's correct. No worries there. And mass air sensor looks good. And you can see our, our fuel trims are correcting already. So um, the, the correction happens more under part throttle, which is usually a, a mass air flow sensor issue that can also cause hard starting cold. Uh, so like I said, right now it's like 70 degrees in the shop, so it wasn't so bad. But the calculations right here, I mean, they're, they're three, 4% into zero and we're good for right now, all right? You see our flex fuel looks good about 10%. Now our VCT system on here is definitely an issue. It's, it's hovering way too much. Like right now it's pretty close, but a lot of times it's hovering, you know, five degrees either way at idle. And once you heat up the engine and you get the wheel thinner, uh, it actually causes an issue where the VCTs are retarding the timing like they should as you accelerate, but then they're getting stuck there and you're coming back down to idle. So um, the VCTs are sticking also when he just had everything replaced. So what's up, you know, is something that get torqued, uh, and stuff like that. So right now it's not running too bad. Again, the, the, the temp is uh, pretty good in the shop right here. Let's look at the power balance on here. And as it idles down, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. It, it's just, when I first brought it in, because the flex fuel inferred was way off and everything, it was just hard to start. Well, it extended crank, and then when it idles down here, you'll see the the engine is kind of all over the place. So right now it's still kind of idling down on there. But it's not any kind of dead misfire on there going on. It was like the wave, the wave going on. It's just all over the place, and it's starting to get there as we idle down on here. So real quick while it's idling down, let's look at the codes on here. So when I went out and drove it and I really tested it, I wanted to see how it reacted full hot and if the VCTs were actually actually sticking and, and having an error to them. Um, sure enough, I got it to set the 12 code and 22 code over uh, retarded bank one and two, all right? And the reason being is the, v the VCTs cannot control the phaser because the oil flow is, is not there, the pressure's not there, and the volume is definitely not there. Uh, so it's, it's erratic. And so they get stuck in the over-retarded position. You come back down to idle and it's not correct and it's set to code. Now when it first came in, it only had the, the rich codes right here, bank one and two, to rich. Now, like I said, that can be from the mass airflow sensor causing the skewed flex fuel reading on here, uh, which will cause it and the flex fuel vehicles because the flex fuel uh, percentage is inferred. This is taking forever to load. And that can be caused by the mass airflow sensor. Um, that valve cover pulling through excessive oil can cause it. And you'll hear it once the idle's down. You can almost hear it already. Once it idles down, it, it's really loud on that side there, uh, indicating the baffles come apart. So on these engines, um, like I said, that the, the flex fuel inferred from the mass air flow sensor being skewed from the cold air, um, the baffle uh, being broken inside of there, and then also, you know, 09 and newer, Ford went to the new style canister purge valves that were really troublesome for sticking open, causing the vehicle stall, uh, hard start sometimes, and of course, uh, you know, rich codes. And that would be right back there. You can see it right there, height back there. So we're gonna do a few tests on that too to make sure. And if that's failing, of course, that's nothing to do with the, the shop that was in here working. But just seeing uh, stuff like this up top here, 
and the way it was put back together has me worried already. And I'm sure we're gonna find some interesting stuff inside. Uh, let's go ahead and idle it down on here and then we'll uh, raise it up and we'll check underneath what is going on with that oil leak, you know, stuff like that. So let me go ahead and uh, get this warmed up and idled down. All right, so check this out. We're starting to heat up a little bit here and it's starting to idle down a little bit. Uh, so check this out on the VCT error down below here. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna put it in gear so that the VCTs actuate and then we're going to see how they react. So this is an error pit, so it should be right around zero. Now initially when we hit it and it actuates, they should jump like that. So I got a little bit and it should come back down to zero. Clear it out. And you can see they're kind of hunting all over the place. Now I'm gonna let off. And you can see they're 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 not holding. See that? They're kind of all over the place. They're not being actuated anymore. They should come right back down to zero. And this gets worse as we um, you know, I heat up and the oil gets thinner and stuff like that. Now I already checked the oil level and of course it's just fine. Uh, he's not due for an oil change for another 2,000 miles of course. And eventually as this heats up, I mean it'll go way over here and it'll be way out of uh, range on there. So the BCTs and the oil flow is still a major issue in there. So check it out. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, you'll start seeing the rolling uh, not I'm not rolling idle, but the, the the power balance is just like a wave on here. And as it heats up, that wave just gets bigger. I mean, it can be whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it's all over the place. It doesn't matter what cylinder. You see that? You see what I'm saying? So that right there is not normal. What should happen with the power balance on here? Regular car, you really see that? That's what I'm talking about. So in a regular vehicle, it should be right here at zero with slight fluctuations, like a little wave, little wave, little wave, little wave at zero. They're all evened out. Look at that. It's almost like it's laboring. You see that? I mean, that's, it's, it's horrible. So looking back at the Scantle data on here, Unless our flex fuel is wrong, and we are actually at a higher flex fuel reading, um, we have now learned 10%, which is standard. Barrel looks good. Our mass airflow might be a little bit high. And our fuel trims, they're not so bad right now. Right around zero, long terms are A-OK. -okay. And our VCTs, they're dancing a little too much. It should be a tighter uh, hover right around zero. You can see, especially this one right here. So we'll see what we see. Let's go ahead and try to take a listen to that valve cover now that it's um, warmed up on here. You can kind of hear that buzzing. You guys like kind of like laboring. But listen to this valve cover. It only gets worse as the vehicle heats up. So you'll really hear a buzzing from here. So that's obviously a concern. Uh, so I'll be interested to see what we find when we start pulling things apart on here. Real quick, let's lit raise the vehicle up and we'll take a look on the underside to see where that oil leak is coming from. Okay, real quick, let's take a look at the underside of the vehicle, see if we can find out where that huge oil leak is coming from. I'm guessing it's from the front cover T-joints that are missing that sealant glob, uh, but it can also be from the valve covers that are missing the sealant glob on there. That little glob of sealant is very important. You'd be surprised the amount of oil that it gets splashed around in there and how it can just seep right out that little trace on there. Uh, so it can, it can soak the front of the engine, the underside, big time in no time. So it's very important. So looking underneath here, here's another quality repair, uh, probably by this shop. Um, see this right here this piece of rubber it's actually an air deflector it's a very important part of the cooling system in the vehicle just like air dams and everything else um, it actually is made to be attached up to the bottom side of the radiator core support right there and what it does is it actually blocks or deflects the air from 
passing underneath the engine and it forces all the air that's coming in from the front of the vehicle to pass through uh, the radiator and condenser and all that so all the heat exchangers up here can do their job and get that good uh, airflow across them and get the heat exchange going on. You got trans coolers, everything up here, power steering coolers, and it's very important. So I don't know why it's zip tied up like this underneath here. But back to the oil leaks. So we can see, you know, the pan's got a little uh, moisture to it here, some pooling up here, nothing too bad. And then it's all getting kind of blown back and pulling up back here. You can see your trips forming everywhere and stuff like that. So what I'm guessing is from those T-joints, now they're a little hard to see. Uh, you can kind of see it right there. It'll get all over the um, the power steering pump too because it kind of is right there. And then it's kind of a low point. So you can kind of see how wet it is up there, even on the block. Okay. And then the same thing on this side. Especially if they're missing sealant altogether, I mean, it'll come right out of there. So you see the AC compressor on this side even further up, I mean, it's all wet coming from further up. And that comes down, and it, it comes down to the oil pan right here, the seam, and you follow it back, and then you see it underneath here, and it pulls up, and you're thinking, oh, it's got oil pan gas that's leaking on there, when it's actually coming from higher up. Let's take a look around a little more. Oh, sure enough, no. Whoa. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah. Look what's missing. So all four bolts across the front of the oil pan are missing. So that's another huge contributor for an oil leak on here. So whenever you pull, the, you do a tiny job, you pull the front cover, obviously, and you pull these four bolts out of there. You pull the front cover, do your tiny job, Put it back on, sealing glob, and you put these four bolts back in. Well, they totally forgot that. Interesting. See, so this oil leaks coming from all corners on here. It's just, just getting better and better, guys. So I'm thinking the cylinder heads were replaced on here, uh, bolt sides. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with this vehicle exactly. You can see there's a lot of, uh, you know, remnants. There's a lot of uh, indicators that there was work going on here. So they have like old studs and new nuts quality gaskets on there. Someone pulled the freeze plugs for some reason on here. I don't know why. On this uh, exhaust right here, he has a stud on this side with some questionable nut on there. It's not the right nut. And then he has a bolt on this side. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see this side. So this side has regular studs on it and nut. Okay, it's a lot of oil coming from the starter on here too, though. Ooh, ooh, look at that. See that right there? Wow, wow, there's a lot of oil coming from up there. Wow, this guy has a million oil leaks. Let me see if I can get a better view for you guys. Kind of get it back, ooh. Oh, wow. Let me pull it back a little bit. Oh, wow. Look at that. Let me zoom in. There we go. Oh, boy. That's the same goopiness that I was seeing on the uh, cylinder head gasket on the other side. I don't know if that's some kind of sealant on there or what, but look at all the oil leaking back here. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's got bolts instead of studs in there. I don't know what's going on with this vehicle. Wow, so, okay, let's go back up top and pull the valve covers. I can't wait to see what we find up there. All right, so I went ahead and turned the AC on real quick while it's idling like this. And I heard the AC compressor come on initially. Uh, so I knew it, I know it comes on electrically, uh, but it hasn't come on ever since. So there's probably a refrigerant issue. We'll see if they charge it properly or not. You can see the compressor clutch down in there is not coming on. You know it's hard to see. Um, what I'm gonna do now, since it's laboring like this, 
is I'm going to actually cap off this PCV tube right here um, because if the, the PCV system and the valve covers here is, is flowing too much, we're getting fresh air on this side, we're coming up on this side, we're sucking it in. If it's flowing too much because the baffle's broken in here, then it's actually going to pull too much oil and cause a rich condition, uh, but it can also cause this laboring. It's like laboring and it's not correcting for it because all the air that's coming in and going into the system is being accounted for by the mass airflow sensor. So it won't throw a lean code. Yeah, so simple test of that is we're simply going to block off the port right here at the intake and forget the PCB system and see if that laboring goes away both on the engine side here and on the scan tool and the power balance. Okay, so we're gonna test two things actually. So we blocked off the uh, flow into the intake manifold from the PCV system here, just capped it off. Uh, but we're also gonna check that canister purge valve back there too, just so I know if we need to order parts or not. So we have the line, uh, the electrical disconnected on it, and then the line is popped on there, ready to pull it off. And we're gonna see if that valve is flowing vacuum from the intake or not. Uh, when it's off it shouldn't be flowing anything so we're gonna go ahead and start back up and try it out let's see what it is Ugh. check that idle on there it seems to run better but then again it just started up we're we'll gonna pull this off real quick the way you test these is while it's disconnected electrically, okay, you disconnect the vapor side here, the vapor hose, and put your thumb on the end. And see if there's any kind of suction. There should be no vacuum bleeding through when it's off like this. And this one passes just fine. So we can go ahead and connect all that back up on there. Nothing right now, that's okay. Uh, we're capped off on here. We're not flowing anymore. Still rolling idle on there. Let's see how it is in the power balance. Real quick. Yes. Let's see if it's any better just the same not just the same good information to have before you go in though all right so here's a big reveal we're gonna pull the first valve cover the passenger side valve cover you know I pulled off all the harnesses and quills out everything was you know pretty normal some harness stuff problems uh, some strip bolts some bolts in the wrong place you know all the usual stuff for people that are not familiar with this engine um, I'm seeing glue holding the gasket to the cover which is never a good sign. Uh, real techs don't do that. They're pushing gaskets and they hold them in there. No need for extra goop on the freaking gaskets. So I'll go ahead and finish getting this harness out of the way and we'll do a big reveal on here. And we'll see. So all the bolts should be out. It should come right off because I said this was just, oh yeah, they were just in here. So let me do it, go ahead and pull it off, up and out, get past the harness on here, and we'll see. All right, so as you guys can see already, um, just pulling the cover on here, there's no sealant glob here or down here. Now this one will cause a little bit of a leak right here, uh, whereas this one down here will actually leak all the way down the front of the cover uh, to the front there and that may be contributing to that big oil leak we saw down below, but of course the four bolts across the front missing is a major concern down there. Um, so yeah, they did a basic aftermarket timing job. They didn't touch the roller followers, which is a big no-no. 09 and newer especially, you wanna change the roller followers. They fail so often and destroy engines. This, I can tell, looks like Ford, but it's actually aftermarket. And they have a Dorman XD phaser. Right now, the L, uh, the center time mark on here, trigger on here, is lining up with the L, so I don't think they're coming apart or anything, but um, of course, it's aftermarket chain. That's another big no-no, because these things, 
they they break uh, way too often and destroy engines. There's a lot of reasons why I want to go OEM, but I don't know. We're going to dig deeper. We're going to pull the other side off. I'll film that, of course, see if there's anything crazy over there. Uh, and then once I pull a front cover, we'll show that. And then uh, if I notice anything with the um, cylinder head here, as far as, you know, cam caps that aren't torqued down, also I'll mention that too. But it looks like this head is new, maybe. And they want him to change the other side. I don't know. It's just a big mess is what it is. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the driver's side valve cover. So pulling this side apart, nothing really to talk about besides the harness was all retainers on it were broken. It's basically just flopping in the wind down here. That's to be expected at this point. Uh, also, the big thing over here, which again is to be expected uh, with the shop that did this work, is this big old line right here is actually a brake booster vacuum supply line from the back of the intake. So it clips in right here on the valve cover, but it also clips in the back side of the head back here. What you want to do when you're pulling the valve covers off is just kind of pry it up and off of the valve cover and then grab the valve cover and pull it out. You don't want to remove from the, the, from the bracket in the back of the head because then it could come loose. Uh, the rubber hose swells and it actually comes loose from the intake manifold and if that pops off there you lose your power boost brakes and of course the, it's a huge vacuum leak so the engine has potential stall all at the same time not good so we're probably going to go in and replace that line back there but let's go ahead and pull the valve cover get this stuff up and out of the way and, and it, Get it off of here. A couple of these are sticking. Otherwise, oh, she comes right off. So same thing as the passenger side. You can see the, um, there's no ceiling globs up here in the front. Aftermarket parts. This one looks like it might be a Ford uh, solenoid. Uh, the other side was a different brand. And of course, Dorman phasers over here. And it looks like they are lined up okay. Uh, an aftermarket chain on there. Reuse the roller followers for some reason. And it looks like this side might have a new head. You can see the head is clean like new, but they transfer the caps over. You see that difference in color, the varnish on there? This is just a real hack job. Maybe I should stop right now on this one because it's not looking good. All right, so after we pull the valve covers off, we start looking at a few things on here. I think we're gonna stop at this point and recommend a new engine to the customer. Uh, there's just too many hodgepodge hack jobs going on here, and it's really starting to irk me, and I'll tell you why. So we already know the engine was not put together properly. Um, you know, all those T-joints don't have sealant on, the valve covers don't, so it's leaking everywhere. The bolts are missing from the front cover uh, by the oil pan there, so there's leaking tons of oil. There's a lot of questionable repairs going on here. I don't know if this was a uh, like a cheap uh, remanufactured engine at some point. I know the last shop did a timing job with aftermarket components, which, you know, it's timed right, and they're installed right as of right now. Uh, and everything's together and working properly, we know they're gonna fail sooner than later, they're aftermarket. Uh, they're very prone to failure, especially in the 543 valve. We have an aftermarket VCT here and a Ford one here, okay? Now, like I said, this engine might have been a, like a, a remanufactured engine at some point. And then the last shop did a timing job and a passenger side head. We know that for sure. That's what the customers tell me, all right? And it appears so. You can see everything looks the same in there. Now we come over to the driver's side here though, and supposedly this head was not replaced, but it was, or something happened in the past. Like I said, there's a lot of questionable hairs. So you can see the, the paint on it. Remanufacturers like to put paint on everything instead of cleaning it up properly. Great, uh, but looking inside of it now, so we're looking inside of it here, and this part right here, the cam tower is obviously clean, cleaner and newer. It's not painted, it's cleaner and newer. This is a newer head that's inside of here, but we are using old cam caps all the way along. Now, the problem with that is these, the, the cam caps and the cam towers, which is all part of the head, 
are a machined unit. What that means is that if a machine shop, when they're building the head and they're machining it, they'll actually put it all together so all the cam caps are back onto the head in order. They'll be torqued down properly, and then they put it on a line boring machine with actually a bore it straight on through there perfectly, and of course, the, to the right size for oil clearance, uh, uh, you know, reasons. You know, you might have nice and straight, obviously, but there's also that oil clearance issue because there's no cam bearings in here uh, to set the oil clearance and bearing clearance in there, all right? It's just a cap. So we're using a newer head with old caps and we're having oil pressure and volume issues. It could all be coming just from this head. Um, you know, so there's a lot of questionable things going on here. And, and seeing that, that's really hokey stuff going on here. Seeing that has me questioning. Is the reason why we're having that rolling idle on all cylinders and just runs rough in general, hot idle, is that all because these cams are incorrect for the vehicle? So they look right, okay? Just look at them, they look right. They're definitely on the right side because one actually sticks out further than the other one. So you can't mix it up. And you can see, you know, they're lined up going down to the guides and all that stuff. So they're on the right side, but are they the right profile? So these engines have, you know, they probably changed them a couple of different times, three, four times throughout the years. And this is an 09. So does they have older style cams on here? Or maybe even newer ones? You know, and it's questionable, especially if they're aftermarket, because a lot of times they do not put any kind of markings on them. So they're playing that guessing game. And that's only on the top end here. What's going on on the bottom end? Uh, what other repairs they've done? And with this head being replaced, for sure, that's what the customer told me. Um, let's see if I can get a light down in there. I noticed... If you look down inside of there, ba, 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 look at that. It's leaking oil. Or they used an inferior gasket on there. And a lot of the old guys with the older gaskets, you spray this adhesive all over the gaskets and they, they put them on there and torque the heads. And that stuff's oozing out. I don't know which it is. But either way, let's say they use an, a cheap gasket and put that spray on there, that's a problem. Let's say they use the MLS gasket that should be on there, and then they still spray that stuff on there. That actually ruins the MLS gasket, the ceiling rings around the compression, uh, uh, the compression ring around the cylinders. So either way, that leakage is not good. So, you know, there's, there's just a lot of stuff going on here, not to mention the, 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 the big question is, why is it rolling? And I really think it has something to do with the cam profiles on here being incorrect. So that's where we're going to leave the video. But just goes to show how bad things can get uh, when you go to uh, shops that are questionable. You start jumping from shop to shop to shop. Uh, and stuff starts coming out like this. And the only real fix at this point, I think, for this customer is a new engine. And he already put four or five grand into it. And he has nothing here from these other shops. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.